Hello and welcome back to our ongoing series, Let's Learn How to Use the Lens Meter. Today is kit number four. Kit number four is a complete pair of mounted lined bifocals. We're going to use the lens meter to read both the distance and the near portion of those lenses. Really brief side note for today, lens meters are notoriously ignored. Uh, most places buy the lens meter when they open and the thing is never touched, calibrated, or serviced from that day forward. Chances are excellent that where you work, you're gonna end up working with a lens meter that's 20, 25, 30 years old. If it is time for recalibration or refurbishment, there are places online or drop me an email and I'll hook you up with somebody. Kit number four is another mounted pair. May as well go and find number four. Double check your etched mark to make sure you have the right frame, right lenses in the right bag. And you will notice when you look at it that it is a lined bifocal. We're gonna build on what we've already been doing and we're gonna add in a couple of new steps. One, we're going to take a near PD measurement or verification. We're going to check our segment height and we're going to learn how to use the lens meter in order to read the bifocal power, which is kind of weird. So hang on, we'll get there. In the meantime, we're not gonna do anything different, just what we've been doing. Our right is supposed to be a minus 275, minus 125 at 68. I can turn my lens meter on. I can turn my power drum to minus 275. And I can turn my axis wheel to 68. Right, right, right. And what I want you to pay attention to when you're putting the lens in up against the lens stop is that the top of the line is below the opening of the lens stop. If you don't do that, if you catch the line anywhere above that, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion that you don't want. So just double check that, and then you can lower your lens holder. And just as always, when you look inside, you should have good crisp sphere lines, and they should be closed. Use your spectacle table, get this lined up all nice, move your chrome knurled sleeve around. Rotate your power drum away from you till you have good crisp cylinder lines. Work everything so everything's lined up. You are at 275, you moved 125. You should be at their power drum at minus four. And that lens is looking good. We can put our three dots on there without moving the spectacle table. We'll go from our right to our left. And this time it says I've got a plus two at 111, and let's see what we got there. We've got some nice crisp sphere lines. Those look good. I can move my chrome knurled sleeve around a little bit, help me get everything lined up. And then it just says I got a little tiny bit of sill, uh, just a minus 50, so I'm gonna rotate that drum away from me just a little tiny bit. And sure enough, I've got cylinder lines at plus 150. It's good and I can mark that lens up. As I mentioned, there'll be two additional things we're going to do. Uh, first, obviously we're going to measure the distance between our two center white dots, and that gives us our distance PD. And I have got a beautiful, perfect 64 there. Then I'm going to measure my near PD. My near PD is that second number. My distance is supposed to be 64. My near is supposed to be 60. And I do that by measuring from inside edge to outside edge of my segment, as you see shown on the screen there. And it is supposed to be a 60, and I've got about 60 and a half, so that's certainly well within tolerance and what you would expect. So we're good there. And the last thing I would need to check is my height, which is supposed to be 12 in each eye and heights are measured from the deepest point in the frame. And I have got about 11 and a half and about 11 and a 
half, which is perfect, no problems there. Now we're going to make sure that our bifocal power is the correct one. And this is where things get a little bit weird, like I said. Why do I say that? I say that because bifocal segment areas, the add power on a lens is often read with the frame turned away from you as if you were wearing it with the segment portion against the lens stop. Let's just talk about that for a few minutes, all right? If you go online and you look into this a little bit, you're gonna see there's five, six different ways of doing what I'm about to show you. Just find one that works for you. Another thing you're gonna find online, there is general consensus that it doesn't really matter if you turn the pair around until you get up into higher powers. The higher the distance portion of the script, the higher the strength the add power is, the more important that it becomes that you turn it around. Another piece of this is that if you go for a practical exam and it doesn't matter what the lens power is, if you don't turn that pair around when you're checking your bifocal segment, you're gonna fail. Those exam proctors are looking for that. Practice it, get used to that turning it around to read the segment, experiment, find one, method that gives you the consistent results that you need and just do it that way. Right lens, right lens, right lens, easy enough. I'm going to start with my distance portion in the lens meter against the lens stop, just as if I had the glasses facing the other way. I am gonna rotate my power drum around until I have good sphere lines in focus in minus cylinder form. Should be just about the prescription that I was, but it may very well be an eighth or a quarter difference. So just get the sphere lines and the axis doesn't matter. It's going to move. So just spin your axis wheel until you get sphere lines. It doesn't matter what number it's at. All right, I've got those. Now I'm gonna take my cheaters and I'm gonna read my power drum and I have got a minus three and I'm actually gonna write that down. Now I'm gonna take my right lens and I'm gonna move it up into my segment and I'm gonna rotate that power drum in the plus direction until I have sphere lines in focus. Now what you're gonna see in here is that the crosshairs where the cylinders and the spheres cross over each other is way, way down at the bottom. That's normal, that's expected. So down around three, just leave things alone. Move that power drum until you have good, beautiful, crisp sphere lines and you're good. Let's see where we ended up. We ended up at minus 150. So that is a plus 150 difference. And sure enough, my add power in my right is supposed to be a plus 150. Great, so far so good. Let's do that now with the left. Here's my left, my left in the distance. I'm gonna rotate my power drum as much as I need to. Rotate my axis wheel as much as I need to. Make sure I'm minus cylinder form. I am at plus 175. Now I'm gonna bring myself up into my segment and I'm gonna rotate that drum. This time I'm up around the two ring and I am rotating. I can even tweak my axis wheel a little bit until I get Good spear lines, that looks pretty darn good right there. Set those to the side, and I am now at plus 325, a difference of 150. I'm good, my ad power is a 150 in both eyes. The other and really far simpler way of checking a standard lined bifocal power is using your good old fashioned lens clock. And what you wanna do is, my right lens, right lens, is clock your front base curve, um, maybe put your pin right on the white dot, hold it, read it, and I've got a beautiful plus six. Then bring your clock down onto your segment, aim right for the middle of it, read the lens clock, and I've got exactly a plus 750. Lo and behold, I've got my plus 150. Gonna do the same for my left lens. I'm gonna put my center pin right on that white dot. I've got a plus seven there. 
And if I clock my segment right up near the line, I'm probably about a millimeter below the line there. I've got 850, a difference of 150. My add in these lenses is a 150. Uh, by all means, if they have a lens clock during your practical, just to be sure, you might want to do both steps. If you're checking jobs in, you know, again, guys, you know, bifocals, line bifocals are, are just becoming kind of dinosaurs. You may or may not even see them anymore in your lifetime, but you do need to kind of know this stuff. When they do come along, just practice, practice, practice. Again, it's not going to be perfect. This isn't going to be beautiful, crisp, on target stuff. Get used to the steps involved, and when you get to any practical exam, you're going to be fine. That is lens kit number four, a lined bifocal. And next week we hit progressives. So I will see you then.